Uh, today's destination, I suppose it's not the most kid-friendly place if you mm-hmm. think about it. I've been there maybe once or twice with the children, but I felt out of place as a parent, to be honest. It was full of, like, younger people. Yeah. Where are you taking us to today, Jen? So, you know, our segment is K-Patch, um, dispatching me to every part in Korea. But mm-hmm. I know that you guys have high interest in Seoul City. Absolutely. And I wanted to hit some of those places. And today we're going to Itaewon. Yes, our listeners, even if they weren't familiar with it, they became familiar with it. with it after e t a e o n class, yes. the drama. But it's always been like a, oh, for the yes. past, what, 10, 15 years, a hot, trendy destination. And before that, even like a global hub. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was young, you go there for fake designer goods. That's what they oh. sold in large quantities. Fake designer goods. I think they've clamped down a lot, so it's harder to find. But mm-hmm. when I was young, that was the image. It was also a little bit scary because mm-hmm. it was where there were lots of foreigners. And I think a lot of people were scared, myself including, it, actually. Mm-hmm. Many like big American GI soldiers like walking <laughs> down the streets. And I'd be like, oh, my goodness, I'm a little scared. Uh, these days, a different image. What are we going to see in your first video then, Jen? So I had some good experiences here and there in... In Itaewon, and for this week, I'm gonna show you this amazing Seoul Central Islamic Mosque, Ooh. Uh, which is in the heart of Itaewon, and also this very famous again Furniture Street, Antique Lovely. Street in All Itaewon. Right. Let's check it out. So to Koreans, uh, it's so uncommon to see a mosque. Right? There's not many in no. plain sight, and right? This is uh, surely known to be the biggest. And uh, as you can see, it is so grand. Wow. And I was so surprised about the size, but also how delicate the design is. Mosques do look beautiful. And you can right? actually miss this even if you're in Itaewon, because it's up the hill kind of behind some yeah. buildings, right? really on a very steep uh, oh, there's hill. A, there's and a there's, school? Yeah, there's a school as well. I didn't well. know that. And right near that building, um, in the parking lot, there's this Turkish cafe oh, where wow. they provide desserts and <gasps> coffees. And uh, I thought it's a great place to hit together. There's some Turkish delights there, the jelly. Wow. Very good, actually. <gasps> yeah. Oh, that's nice If you go to there see. with your kids, uh, I would highly recommend. And you can see some of these beautiful products of Turkey. Turkish cultures. And the people are Turkish there? Like the I staff? So, as you can see from the video, yeah. Wow. What is It this? It really feels like you are in a completely different country. What are right. you eating? What kind of pastries are they? Oh, uh, that's kind of that. like a, I think like a pancake or a cake oh. from Turkey. And it tastes like uh, honey together with butter. Ooh. It wasn't something that very shockingly different. Okay. But the texture, I'd say, was very something that I don't try in Korea. What know? was the thing with all the little kind of, I don't know how to describe it. it almost I think that's like a little, coconut. Um, oh, shattered. little shreds of coconut. Yeah, shreds. <gasps> that looked coconut delicious. Shreds. It was really good, guys. So I saw at the beginning of the video as well, there was somewhere called Cairo something or other. So up near the mosque, there are actually lots of Islamic or maybe that mm-hmm. area of the world centered cuisine cafes and restaurants around that area. Yeah, around this building... Um, So once you go up the hill, uh-huh. uh, I only found this cafe alone. Yeah. But if you go down, then you'll see a lot of like Islamic mm. bookstores and oh, food wow. places. Yeah, because this, to describe where it is, because unless you go and search it, it's actually really easy not to see that. Despite you saying it's very big, and it is very big when mm-hmm. you get up there from your video, I see. But it's up some really like steep stairs, very right? Very steep, yeah. So, so you'll it's... get the feeling that, it, is this the right direction? <laughs> yeah, where am I going? It doesn't look like some religious facility is up there. Yeah. But if you're familiar with Itaewon, from Itaewon Station, if you kind of come out the exit where the fire station is and kind of keep walking down the road towards, what is that area? It's h a n g a n g j i n right? That end. Keep walking that way. And then up really steep steps on the right. I think mm-hmm. there's a sauna. There definitely used to be. Oh. I used to go after football. Wow. That was really you good. You had a really 
clear memory. <laughs> uh, the, oh my god! That's the only time I went up there, and I was wow. really again. I was surprised. I was like, "What is up these <laughs> stairs? It looks a bit different." Yeah. And then you'll find that mosque if that's what you're into, or you just want to take some photos. As Jen said, it's not common yeah. to see mosques in Korea. Right. right? I think uh, it really gives you different feeling um, compared to when you walk all the way up to the hill. Because mm-hmm. this time I used my car, uh-huh. <laughs> so it was much more comfortable. But okay. also, I, I really enjoyed uh, going through the street, seeing the stores, and. Um, I remember my first visit was like, oh, my God, maybe almost 10 years ago uh-huh. uh, with my uh, present husband again. Yes. And uh, we've been to a lot of places, <laughs> by the way. And I was so amazed to see how the village, I, I would call it, has mm-hmm. grown and developed. Since then. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much now in e t a e o n And there's that side of things, the more kind of homely feel and maybe like the local feel to those Islamic countries. But there's mm-hmm. also really trendy, cool, youngster hip places oh, behind yes. the Hamilton Hotel area. It's really busy on a weekend. Uh, we've showed you the mosque and the Turkish cafe by the mosque in Itaewon. Lots of messages. Aaron saying the food looks delicious. Steve saying the pastries and desserts look amazing at that Turkish bakery. Yeah, in the UK, mm. Turkish Delight was actually the brand of jelly dessert that you could buy in the chocolate section for ages. So mm-hmm. I think Brits are familiar with that. But oh. it, here in Korea, it's not so common to have oh, a Turkish dessert. Maybe Turkish ice cream is a bit yeah, famous, that's... right? quite common now i've never seen that in the uk but when i came here i was really surprised i was like why are turkish people always doing the weird (laughs) ice cream tricks you know they've got this long Mm -hmm. scooper and they often trick the kids into like trying to pick up the cone and then they can't it's real fun joking with the kids (laughs) yeah that's quite famous and you can easily find them uh selling turkish ice cream in like amusement parks usually as you said uh for the kids yeah just random places right (laughs) random entertainment places there's a stall with a Mm. turkish guy and a hat on You got some messages? Yeah, from Donna. I ate avocado uh, espresso over vanilla ice cream at a lovely second floor cafe. Ah, in Itaewon. Beautiful. You can find pretty much something for everyone there. If you go way up the hill there towards Namsan, there's the big H luxury hotel. Mm -hmm. And you can look over Itaewon area and that area and the Han River. That's beautiful. But then you can find cheap. really cool, trendy, hole-in-the-wall oh, yes. cafes as well. Yeah, a lot of college students go there for their weekend getaway with their uh, friends. Mm. And as you said, it's a romantic place for the couples as well. There's something so for dynamic. everybody. Apart from, as I said, I don't think for kids. Would you agree, Jen? Like, is, yeah. Were there places that would be maybe suitable for children? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I felt a bit sad by that. I mean, the road itself is mm. narrow yes. and there are a lot of like uh, motorbikes mm-hmm. and cars. And if you go on the weekend into the k o l m o k i s the alleys, they can be packed with adults, you know. <laughs> Sometimes if you go a little later who have been drinking as well, mm-hmm. so for kids, not really advisable, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, Benny saying, wow, love Lovely dedication to the Muslim community with that mosque and mm-hmm. Turkish desserts. I must try that soon. Is e t a e w o n also having uh, restaurants from other countries, not just Muslim countries? Oh, definitely. Mm. This is very multicultural place, guys. Yeah. Um, so to give you a brief history about this region, if you may, um, it started all after the Korean War and uh, near... this place there is u.s camp Mm. so initially this place was much more about u.s culture yeah because there were soldiers from america and then as time went by we have uh, more visitors from different countries and it has become much more multicultural uh, from every parts of world really right yeah you can find british pubs in the back alleys like we showed you some islamic country places there's mm-hmm. a lot of halal food in that area to be honest uh, and then lots of european south american southeast asian you can really find like yeah. jen says everything in the 80s and 90s mm-hmm. early 90s i would say yeah it was completely america centric and yeah. it was one of the only places in korea where you could go and maybe reliably find english speakers mm-hmm. like maybe in the cafes and the restaurants as well other places at that time really hard to find people who would speak back to you in english oh, to yes. be honest yeah and 
Yeah. So before it was much more about little foreign country within Seoul City. Mm -hmm. So there weren't many Koreans you yeah. can find on the street. <laughs> But now it is very different, right? A mm. lot of Korean couples uh, all from different generations are visiting. It's a hot tourist spot for locals as well. Yeah, it's And, a good mix, I think. Oh, International yes. people still love going there, but there's loads of Koreans as well. And you yeah. just all mingle together. And there are a lot of performances. It's much more interactive, mm, yeah. which would be really welcome, isn't it? You can find the best restaurants and best bars, I think, in Itaewon. is maybe even, and this might be controversial for people who love Gangnam, but I say it's overtaken that area as the cool, trendy place. It's not like as big and modern. It's got a bit of an older soul vibe, but I'd say lots of people love hanging out there. Uh, you also had a message from Cisco, right? Yeah. There is Indo Resto too there, Peter. Oh. It was not my favorite area anyway. I only <laughs> went there when I have a reason to go there. Hey, hey. We'll share pictures to Kakao Talk. Oh, we'll try oh, and get we'll those up later. The thing that I can understand from Siska's message there is mm. it's quite different from the rest of Seoul and the rest of Korea e t a e w o n So if you're going for that traditional maybe Korea vibe, Perhaps you might skip Itaewon. Mm. But I'd say like many cities, some of the best places are where foreign communities are. Like in London, yeah. Chinatown is amazing. Mm -hmm. And you get some amazing Chinese food. And yeah. other, other districts with other cultures. It's just part of that country in some yeah, way. Yeah, but you know, come to think of it, um, I don't recall any other country having like this kind of Itaewon place with so much multicultural... Mm. You know, food stores all together at one spot. Yeah, I wonder. Because usually they're like Chinatown, yeah. Italy, like there's a certain theme. But e t a e w o n is really so global, isn't it? It's just it? a global hub, isn't yeah. it? I wonder, let us know, listeners, in your city or town, is there like a global place? Maybe Hong Kong, I remember one of my friends saying, maybe it's Lang Kwai Fong. I'm not sure if that's just for like mainly Europeans and Americans, but it was really a different vibe. Let mm -hmm. me know if you know. Second video today, Jane, you said there's a furniture street. Is that what we're going to get to? Oh, yes. There's so much things to do and see in Itaewon. And I picked this beautiful antique furniture street, which is one of those hot tourist spots. Here, Here we, we go. go. So... It was a rainy day, by mm -hmm. the way, so unfortunately <laughs> I couldn't see the furnitures out on the street as they do. Ah, okay. Uh, the they Sesame often have street. Like, fairs, but you can see these lovely furnitures uh, just all close by. And there were this tourist couple looking <laughs> into this store, and I happened to peek into this store, and it's, this is what she gets. It's not common to see this kind of antique furniture yeah. in Korea. In England, you see this everywhere. Mm. Like, it's very common. Yeah, most of them are like very European. Yeah, I think imported a lot of them, mm. right? I don't find, I didn't find it multicultural for uh -huh. this street alone. Yeah. Uh, so... For me, I really liked it. But if you want something more multicultural, then it may not be your feeling. <laughs> yeah, a n t i q u e so soothing. Antique, like Western furniture is the yeah. hub. And they've like made that. They revamped it, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or so. And so the street has a little sign on it. It says Furniture Street or k a g u g o r i there. Mm -hmm. And it's just a nice stroll. I never buy antique furniture, but just looking at the furniture there is really fun. And I think it is a bit pricier to what you might be used to in the States or in the UK because it's very rare yeah. to have here in Korea. But you're right. The atmosphere, completely different to the mosque and the Turkish <laughs> cafe. Right. And, and, and it's so close, you know. Yeah. It's down the road from i t a e w o n s a m g o r i right? The kind of... three-way road where mm -hmm. the station is and then you do another right down the next side street again mm -hmm. look it up before you go because if you're on the main street of e t a e w o n you won't see this furniture street right oh, the main yes. street is all no. shops and then a hotel etc yeah. etc et you have to know where to go to find these gems that jen has introduced today Yeah, and you know this street was formed in 1960s when North <gasps> American soldiers stationed in Yongsan, mm. uh, the U.S. camp again, and they sold their furniture before returning back to their home country. Oh, wow. So they that brought it over start. with them yeah. and then they left it in Korea and just sold it. Right, because oh. they can't carry it on the plane, <laughs> right? 
That's amazing. And then as time went by, more people were visiting this spot mm-hmm. and we're seeing a, a row of these stores uh, beautifully. And also you can find cafes and food stores yeah. together. Yeah. down that area um, and it's just fun to like walk around isn't it Marilyn says would you say it's expensive to live in Itaewon hmm if you're to li- live if you're living in a nice new build mm-hmm. I'd say it would be pretty pricey but there are lots of like we said older buildings in yeah. Itaewon and if you're living in a smaller like villa around that area mm-hmm. it can be fairly reasonable yeah I think. you know actually i ha- i had a friend from america mm. whom i met at grad school she lived in itaewon oh, okay and uh she was looking for something very economical yeah so i think you can definitely find some mm. of those uh, places and in fact if you go there A lot of the homes are really old. Yes, yeah, and, the buildings uh, are really so old. And it's not so fancy, especially <laughs> near the mosque, um, y- you know. And in fact, this district has been designated by the government to, to redevelop. Oh, I see. So it's going to change a lot. It's going to change for sure, I believe, yeah. in a couple of decades. When you drive around the little alleys, you can see buildings like 40, 50 years old, perhaps, low-story builds. And mm-hmm. like Jen said, if you go inside, a lot of them can be quite worn But in lieu of that, they can be cheap to live in. Benny says, I don't know if we'd have a Filipino restaurant there in Mm -hmm. Itaewon. I'm sure. I'm sure there must Mm. be a Filipino one. I'm curious. Uh, uh, And then you say, whoa, furniture stores over in Itaewon. That'll be on my list to visit in Seoul. Yeah, not just general furniture. This is all kind of used antique stuff is what they specialize in there. Yeah, and I think they regularly have this, uh, like, kind of like a festival or Mm -hmm. fair um, and uh, you can have a yeah you can search it on online and you can see people just uh, look around the items on the street Mm. under a sunny day yeah when it's not raining there's a lot out on the streets Mm -hmm. right you got some oh yes from stacy and i love antique furniture and from steve lots of unique furniture pieces at the store Yeah, if you want to stand out in Korea, I think getting antique furniture is quite a good way to do it. Whereas in the UK, everyone seems to have some kind of antique <laughs> furniture, so you're not really standing out in that way. Yeah, I think uh, Koreans have something for European style uh, furniture, don't you think? Yeah, my auntie, when I used mm-hmm. to visit in the 90s, she was quite wealthy at the time, and mm-hmm. her house was full of all this old oh. baroque European style <laughs> wooden furniture in a Korean apartment. So it really oh, wow. is an interesting kind of vibe to it because you're living like on the 20th floor with all this European <sighs> furniture, which you expect in a European house. Mm-hmm. She used to love it, actually. <laughs> uh, Yana says, talking about e t a e w o n I remember reaching the airport in Korea at midnight one time I visited. I had to get off at the e t a e w o n area because mm-hmm. the train no longer worked. It mm-hmm. was a bad decision. in the the summertime people were partying until late it was Mm. so crowded you know i hope that maybe i can film some um scenes from like clubs or (laughs) bars because that's a huge um night culture in itaewon and if you like that you know yes i think it's worth to check it out of course if you're an adult (laughs) yes yeah no kids allowed and you'd have to get someone to look after your son (laughs) jen while you're filming that (laughs) and it can get ram packed the last time i was there mm-hmm. at night time must have been just before covid mm-hmm. the street behind the hamilton hotel is like the main street for all the cool bars and stuff mm-hmm. you couldn't move like <gasps> the, the the alleyway was just packed full of people and everyone fully. just rubbing against each oh other drinking God. and stuff now i'm older i don't like that <laughs> when, I, when i was younger kind of like yeah this is fun yeah And I was like, oh, get off me. You're all sweaty. <laughs> uh, Marilyn Wells also says, my list is getting longer of places to visit when I go to Korea next oh, year. Nice. For sure, e t a e w o n is definitely a place I want to go to. I'll check out the places from the videos, perhaps. Marilyn's from New Zealand. I'm not sure about any New Zealand cuisine there, but I do know there is a fabulous from the same Southern Hemisphere side Mm -hmm. of things, South African restaurant there, which is really famous. I actually found one of that. Yeah, that was a very good... In fact, um, I wanted to hit some of those places, Uh but I have to say it's not a... kind place for parking. Ah, yes. Yeah. Not Itaewon. Well, don't take your car. I had to park at the Yongsan Kuchong. Ah, the, uh, the city, city hall. hall place. And that's a little bit of a walk on the what? Noksap 
Pyong side, mm-hmm. I think, of Ite Won. Uh, and yeah, you'll have to walk a long time. But actually, that's quite a cool building, the Yongsan City that Hall. The building <laughs> itself is worth to check it out. The design, it looks like a wave, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's all glass and shiny, shiny. Uh, we got some pictures to show as well. Siska's got in touch here saying, So far, only been to Ite Won a couple of times. One time because I joined the Create Your Hangul t shirt event. At ET1 station. Oh, brilliant. I think that's just a temporary event. I don't think that's all the time. And then you said the second time was when John invited us to see him play at a club in ET1. John is a former guest at Adidang Radio. Oh. Forgot the club name though. And we only waited outside because you needed a pass or something to enter the club.、Mm-hmm. And then suddenly we saw Esna and、uh, we got to go in. Esna took us with her and even met another former guest. To Arirang Radio, Amy inside, all these pictures. Oh, nice. That's what's、oh. great about e t o One. If you meet people you know, then you can maybe get sneaked into clubs、oh, and places. Now I'm getting jealous. I miss that kind of、yeah. days, you know. All right, let's go, Jen. <laughs> let's, let's go on Friday night <laughs> one time and relive our youth, perhaps. Oh, my God, that's so nice. <laughs>、uh, we also had something from Ying Yin in Malaysia who said this. Uh, I stayed,、uh, sorry, I went to Ite One for a fashion party, and my mum, who was waiting for me, managed to order a coffee all by herself at a nearby cafe. I was so proud of her.、Mm-hmm. I think this is the guest house photo, but we got some of.、Uh, Oh, that looks、Yin. delicious, though. And you can see on the wall the Ite One mural. Yeah. That's a good photo That's spot,、beautiful. isn't it? And then you said, I stayed in Koreatown in Little India in Bangkok and was surprised to see Korean BBQ restaurants and many Korean shops there.、Uh-huh. Oh, wow. This is Bangkok's Koreatown. Oh. oh, I can see the hunger there. And the there's、alphabet. even a Ollie's Coffee, which is a brand <laughs> here in Korea. That's pretty cool, isn't is it? Is it all this? I'm just not、know. saying the brand name Sorry, properly. That's, that's a joke, isn't it? <laughs> no, if, if you're getting sponsored, you can say them, Jen. <laughs> you got some information for us about Ite One that we could give to our listeners before yeah, we need to say goodbye? I, I thought,、um, you know, some of you might wonder, like,、uh, who built the mosque that I just showed you in the first part? And、yes. uh, I was surprised to find out that. It was actually supported by the President Park Jong hee during、wow. the 1960s. Kind of dictatorial offered, government. <laughs> yes, who offered the Korean Muslim Federation land on which to, to build a proper mosque as a gesture of goodwill to potential Middle Eastern allies <gasps>、uh, then. Wow. And so a lot of the governments from Middle East, including Saudi Arabia and other, several other Middle, Middle Eastern nations,、mm. they provided funds. Wow. To build this amazing mosque. Do you know a bit of history there? A lot of Koreans in the 80s and maybe 70s went to work in Saudi Arabia.、Mm-hmm. All of my uncles, they went together with one Korean、oh, wow. construction company because、mm-hmm. they were using a lot of Korean companies、yeah. there to build things in the desert. And you'd make a lot of money compared to what you could make in Korea. Yeah. And I think the relationship between the Middle East and Korea was really strong there economically. Maybe. Because of that reason, most of the funds came from Saudi Arabia. Interesting, yeah.、So、you know. Still a very wealthy company, thanks to all the oil there.、Uh, to be honest, to give the flip side, there are certain places in Korea where there have been mosque plans, and then the locals have said no and really protested. I think it was、mm. in Daejeon, maybe, where there are a lot of protests against the building of a mosque because、mm. it's not common. So, Korean people are a little bit fearful sometimes of、yeah. what it will do to the neighborhood, which,、mm. of course, we need to get past. That and hopefully in the future we can all live happily ever after, yes, right? <laughs> Jen, we're going to take a look at ET1 part two next week. Yes, looking forward to it. Have a wonderful seven days, and we'll see you on Thursday. Be safe, everyone. Thank you very much.